as a museum, we want people to reconnect with nature. The majority of people live in urban environments. So it's really important that urban green spaces are both available and we understand how to use urban green space for not only nature, but also for people. In our new gardens, we use sensors to monitor sounds produced by the natural world, birdsong or grasshoppers, crickets, but it, also any other sounds, so like footsteps, the wings of birds flying. Most people probably not try and do bioacoustics in an urban environment. Um, there's big challenges, cars, road noise, aeroplanes, foxes come and chew the cables. So <laughs> literally anything new we put out in the gardens has to be foxproof. But then we also need to study nature in these urban spaces. Part of what we're doing is developing the tools to bring this tool set of bioacoustics into an urban environment. This is going to be one of the most intensively studied urban uh, environments in the world, uh, world first really. Looking at how can we make it easier for us to really understand, monitor and understand the changes of nature and biodiversity before human intervention, after intervention, and then what we need to do to really restore it. So this is the kind of devices we'd use to monitor sound in water. This is like the base station devices plugs into our power and data network and also plugs into hydrophone, which is essentially just a waterproof microphone. This device records that and periodically sends it to our data ecosystem for analysis. The data ecosystem is a cloud platform powered by Amazon Web Services. In the first year, we're hoping to have at least 20 terabytes of data inputted and uploaded. In this dashboard, you can see all of the recent submissions. These can be uh, accessed by Ed, and we can then run that through machine learning models to detect species like birds, um, and yeah, a much greater scale than we could have before. And what we're aiming for is about 1,000 audio recordings by the end of uh, this survey season, which finishes in, I think, around September, October time. There's going to be a lot more data to come over the summer. The acoustic data we're collecting um, is combined with other surveying techniques. So we've got a long history of visually observing what's been in this space. And also we're using probably new techniques like environmental DNA. And all of these give us a slightly different picture of what's going on. It's one of the big challenges really bringing all of those things together. Then we can start to untangle like which is the best technique to use in a given situation. Historically, data is quite fragmented, so um, you can imagine different projects, kind of just researchers storing data on their laptops, move on to the next project, and it's kind of very hard to piece everything together. Also, the kind of underlying metadata surrounding those surveys, so how a particular sample is collected or processed, you kind of lose that, whereas the power of the data ecosystem is really able to kind of store that data at each step. So you store the data at the point that you collect the sample, the point that you process a sample, and the point that you actually get a species occurrence through it. So researchers can actually have a single place where they can come in and look at all of those different data types in one place. We're really hoping that this sets uh, the foundation for us to be able to dive deeper and to understand the impact of urban environments and how that affects nature and biodiversity because the reality is half of the population lives in cities and that number is only going to grow. So really this is just the beginning in terms of being able to really monitor for the first time what that relationship is and over time we're hoping that this will enable scientists to really come up with the actual insight for us to actually know what to do to ensure that we're protecting and restoring nature.